Chapter 964, Wacky Wahoo Samurai Man Goes International! Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D Cast. Ahoy mateys, I'm the best guy ever and this is Give and Take. Ikisu kisu, smooch. Mm, don't mind if I do, Sue. Uh, we got a chapter 964, but first, cover page, Gang Beam. Gang Beige, Volume 14, we're going to infect all of you with the Kiss Kiss germ. Is this a devil fruit? Do you think this is a devil fruit since they said Kiss Kiss? Um, it's a double well, thing they do? They did say, well, it's probably, uh, it's just, it's, it's their power. It's either a germ that they're shooting into people to make them kiss because they've got guns. I, they see, I see them pointing guns. So it could be mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. bullet with a germ in it. Which I think might lead into, this This is what might lead it into something interesting, because this is just mm -hmm. some random pirate crew. But if they've got germs mm -hmm. in bullets, that reminds me of something. I forget exactly what it is, but there was, I think, what was it? It, was, it wasn't the Germa people, it was the, they were going to, mm -hmm. who am I thinking of? There, there was, I, there was bullets uh, being I used don't know. to spread <laughs> germs uh, very recently in Wano, the, in the prison there was all that Spreading? stuff. Oh, oh, that 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 bullet that Queen had made that spreads that disease or whatever, yeah. whatever it was called. Maybe, maybe. The, the, oh, that was called the mummy disease, the mummy virus, I think. Yeah, if he makes weapons, maybe he sells weapons. Maybe these guys have the weapons. You know that that's possible. Though I'll just state for the record that, as we all know, uh, uh, in in One Piece, devil fruits are always named in a very specific way. It's like a repeated word, and that word always has two like two Japanese letters or like two syllables. So kisu kisu. Kisu Kisu, like, know me. It does fit the pattern. So my instinct is to think that this is this is Devil Fruit related. Though yeah. I don't know that, obviously. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I think, we'll see. I think if it's Devil Fruit, then it's just sort of like BG's going to punch him and then that's it. And then yeah, people are going to like What him. if, I mean, I think you're right, but what if, oh my God, big retcon, turns out Lola is actually the leader of this crew and she has the Kiss Kiss Devil Fruit and that's why she so wanted to smooch boys back in the day because uh, retcons. Well, I mean, kiss, it kiss. looks like when you get Kisu Kisu, <laughs> um, your lips turn into a chew face and they, like the, the little boy down there, he's not part hmm. of the crew. He's being kissed and now he can't help but try to kiss the girl who is running away in fear. Oh, is that what's going on? Oh, yeah, you're right. It does look like this boy and that guy behind him, who I don't think is part of the crew, yeah, yet has sweating. been kind of made to want to kiss her. He's like, I'm oh, sorry, shit. I don't, I don't want to, but uh, I got a, I, I got a molest. Uh. Mm. Uh, there he goes. That was my excuse. That got me out of jail every time. Let's see you if don't it works understand. for these boys. It was a devil fruit that made me do it. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll 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 see how this resolves. Uh, uh, all right, yeah. there it is. Okay, chapter nine sixty four, Odin's adventure. Let's get to it. So, so here we are, Odin. We're on Wano. Odin wants to go out to sea with the Whitebeard pirates, but they say no. Those jerks. Yeah, Whitebeard saying, uh, "You're too much of a loud mouth and a crazy man." Um, you Which is surprising to say a pirate to say to just some dude. You're too crazy for us, dude. Like, whoa, man. Well, but also the point that he's not a follower, I guess, is yeah, fair. Well, yeah, the, the whole, like, you're not going to follow yeah. me. He won't work as a follower um, because he's, he's too crazy. And Whitebeard has recently had experience mm -hmm. in the Rocks Pirates of people all wanting to be the star of the show. Odin flinches Indeed. because he knows that this is true. And he will mm -hmm. want to be the captain mm -hmm. immediately. Um <laughs> but he he just he just wants to be in a crew so bad because he's so terrible at navigation, and he can't mm -hmm. sail to save his life. Literally, he dies every single time. It's true, it's true. And so the Wano boys, his uh, his retainers, are in total agreement with Whitebeard. This guy sucks. Don't take him anywhere. With an epic fist bump, sealing yes. the deal between Whitebeard and Kinemon. Very Kinemon fist based. bumps Whitebeard. That's a pretty cool thing to say. Kinemon fisted Whitebeard, and there was plenty of room in there because he's a large man. No doubt about it. <laughs> uh, uh, so, I mean, so that's it. And you get a little dialogue of Marco talking to Nekomushi and Inogarashi about, like, what? You think there's only, like, five islands? You idiot. There's tens of millions of islands at least. This world is huge, you know, which means right. no one could ever visit all those if there's that many of them. Yeah, that's kind of... It seems like... That seems a bit exaggerated to a me. A little bit of an <laughs> exaggeration of a number. I mean, uh, there's no, like, huge <laughs> continents in One Piece at all, aside from the red line. Um, so I yeah, imagine that being like so. in east, north, south, west, blues, there's loads and loads mm -hmm. and loads of islands. Um, right, but the right. Grand Line doesn't seem to have that many. Like the first half of the Grand Line, uh, mm -hmm. there's like 
so many paths you can go down. I think there's maps showing how many islands have been mentioned. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's not a hundred in the first no, half it's of not. Grand Line. <laughs> it's like how could there be so many millions of islands when there's not that many? It seems like in the Grand Line. I, and you, and this Grand Line feel is such like a, a large moment. part of the world. Well, uh, geographically speaking, it's probably I would guess like less than ten percent of like the surface area of like the whole planet. Um, I, maybe ten percent. I, I don't know. Maybe a little bit more. But like certainly most of the world is the uh, what, what do they call them? The this, the, the east, west, north, south, blue, the blues. Right, right. Um, y- y- actually, you know what? So so I don't. I feel like this is Oda kind of like telling us through Marco like how many islands there are, and I have a little trouble believing it. But, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal. Yeah, Although, mean, what this does make me think is that most of the islands, most of these islands, assuredly, have to not be in the Grand Line. Because the Grand Line isn't most of the surface area of the planet. And it, it almost makes me feel a little bit like, like, hmm, we sure are spending, like, all of our journey of One Piece on the Grand Line, basically. Wouldn't there probably be some cool adventures to have in some of those seas as well? That's yeah, a little too bad that we're not going to explore them. It, it, it is <laughs> you know kind of I mean? weird of a number, because, like, even if it's less than 10%, less than 10% of 20 million plus that's, is, that's is still, like, like a several million. <laughs> se- like, <laughs> like, um, a, like, about a million or, like, a, at least a few thousand. Unless yeah. in the Grand Line there are many, many, many islands that they just skip past or we they visit but they don't talk about because they're, you know, insubstantial. They're not like an arc island. I don't yeah. know. And, like, and, you know, I'm sure that's really true. I'm up. sure that there's many islands like that. Like, uh, remember the place where, like, Blackbeard fought Whitebeard, Bonero Island? Like, it just seemed like there was just one town on there, and, like, that's about it. And, I mean, I'm sure there's probably lots of pl- – maybe there's probably tons of, like, unpopulated islands, too. Um, or maybe there's, like, archipelagos. Maybe th- This motherfucker is probably counting every little, like – like, Shabmundi Archipelago is an archipelago. This motherfucker's probably counting each little individual landmass as a fucking island to boost the numbers, to yeah. act really cool to these guys. Oh, fuck off. Like, Totland is, like, a thousand islands in of itself or some shit. Get the well, fuck... Tot- even though, that's, Tot- I guess that's Totland true. Is a, those is are a individual region. islands. So, <laughs> I, w- I would count those as separate islands, but, like... Okay, yeah, that's true, because Arch- Big Mom, I think, united them into one kingdom yeah. or something. But anyway... Okay, fair enough, fair enough. That's just sort of a... Shut up, Marco, is the main point. You're Shut green. Up, Get the fuck out of here. Look at your big eyes. <laughs> We've literally been pirates longer than Marco at this time in the game. We've been doing this for like a decade or, or more for some of us. You know... I am a real pirate in real life. True. Is my point. Mm-hmm. Look at my ship. Okay, anyway, so here we are, and uh, Odin, two weeks later, okay, so as we said, they'd be, Whitebeard boys would be here for two weeks. Two weeks pass, Odin's gonna go uh, take a fat shit... And Izo is like, uh, mm, I got my eye on you, but okay, sir, whatever you say. But I, th- I think he's up to something, Gib. W- what do you think? Uh, I think if you turn the page, you'll see that he runs away. Oops. So he does. Well, for, okay, so Whitebeard and the boys are sailing. They've got treasure. They've got gold. They've fixed up their ship with help from the natives of Wano. And they're like, oh, you know, I could take Odin with us, but he's royalty. People aren't allowed to leave legally. It'd be a big, big hassle. So fuck it, I won't. But then, cha-chang, fucking cool-ass Japanese rope thing around the mast. Uh, Odin has latched on, and he's being dragged behind the ship. He is running away. Here he goes. Let me on your ship, please. So he's just trying to break on through his own machinations. And Izo yeah. followed him. Oh, there it is. Izo, who we know ends up as one of the commanders in the Whitebeard Pirates, did indeed follow Odin, latches onto him, and they're both being dragged out to sea behind the Moby Dick. And the whole crew's like, Nani? But such is life. <laughs> so there yeah, they go. So here is the 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 rub, the situation. Uh, Whitebeard says, "Get Izo on the on the on the ship," and he says to uh, mm-hmm. Odin, "You, you crazy man! We will allow mm-hmm. you." Uh, well, by the way, people are worried at in Wano, like, "Oh, uh, naturally, something, yeah. something." But the the retainers the are thing, freaking out, which is very understandable. <laughs> the interesting thing is, he says to Odin, or he says to Izo. Uh, Odin has three days. If he can hold on to this chain, being dragged behind our ship in the in the water, coughing and spluttering for three days, mm-hmm. then he can join the crew. And uh, Odin is like, hell yeah! He <laughs> grabs hold as hard as he possibly can, and thus begins uh, Odin in the real world. 
Indeed, indeed. I mean, yeah, trials, tribulations, bing, bong, bing, taking a lot of damage, getting a lot of bruises and whatnot, smashes through glaciers, eaten by fish, big waves and whatnot, ow, ow, ow. But uh, he's hanging on there so far, so good. And he's got one hour left after a few days pass. And all the Whitebeards are already way warmed up to this guy. They're like, wow, yeah. this guy is really strong. This guy's really tough. He's really doing his, his he's good really work. He's really dedicated. Little, really dedicated. And Marco here is like, he's basically already one of us. Oh, cute old little young Marco. Looking good. Looking good. What if Marco already has his devil fruit? I, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway... So, uh, so there you go. They're almost there. Izo says to Whitebeard, I won't forgive you for making my master go through all this. So, ooh, drama being set up between these two. How are they going to resolve this one? Um, but then, suddenly, smash cut to a new island where we suddenly see a bunch of pirates assaulting what appears to be a young woman running away who are trying to capture her uh, and say they'll take her to Wano. And who could it be? Why, it's Amatsuki Toki, later to be known as Kozuki Toki, Fucking Odin's future wife, uh, user of the Toki Toki Time Devil Fruit. There she is. She's on this island, and uh, they, they, yeah. she's gonna get human trafficked. So watch out for that, sis. She looks yeah, just so like it, um, what's her face? Uh, um, all the One Piece girls. Oh, okay, yeah, but even most of all, like, like uh, her Hiori. daughter, yes. Hiori. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, by the way, her her uh, her outfit has moons and sparrows on it, which are uh, very very similar to the uh, the whole Kozuki clan thing. Which makes me wonder, since she is from hundreds of years ago, if she's actually related to uh, the Kozuki clan in some way. We know that the uh, I think the Japos love to interbreed with their royalty. I mean, many many clans did. I wonder if that's uh, going to be extra sexual, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, like she could be an ancestor of Odin's or something. Like an a a ancient, like, aunt, because, I mean, she probably doesn't have any kids at this point. But, yeah, something like that. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Married within the royal family, something you got to do, maybe. Yeah. I assume they do that. I don't know. So, uh, but anyway, she's going to get slavered. She's so watch gonna out get, for that, She's going to get sliced up, uh, sold mm -hmm. as, as uh, you know, whatever. As meat, as lasagna. As, you as know. lasagna. As Traditional Japanese lasagna. lasagna. And so, <laughs> and so um, she she says in her little think bubble, maybe I have to leap into the future again. So she's mm, been indeed. presumably jumping through time 20 years at a time every time she gets into a scrape. Uh, just get good. I mean, why why wouldn't you like study the blade? Why get more? good when you can get gone? Is what I say, and that's clearly that's her the ethos. Way out. Uh, well, she's clearly a coward. <laughs> well, she just doesn't want to get slaved, you know. Hashtag slaved, and I don't blame. Her. It was the the old days. That was that was what they called getting hashtag blacked. Uh, but uh, she's gonna get slaved. So watch out for that, sis. Um, but uh, luckily, just in time. What's this from the sea? A strange, bulbous creature, an umibozu, whatever the fuck that is, uh, comes out of the water and says, Oh, I heard a woman. Are you okay? And spooks off these angry pirates and uh, immediately passes out. So, oh my god, it's Odin. He let go because he heard a woman crying for help. So he immediately abandoned, even though he was so close. He was like less than a few minutes left. Yeah. And he went to go uh, save Hiori. How, how heroic. Odin, I mean, Odin is uh, Toki, basically Toki. Luffy Sanji. Uh, he's exactly like Luffy. And presumably everyone like that. Uh, all these, like, courageous, like, just, they want to help. Actually, you know what? If, if Luffy was in this situation, I do not think, well, Luffy is a pretty selfish guy sometimes. But he does generally help people who are, like, crying out for help. Even though I mean, he is, if he uh, heard a woman crying for help, he... Like, I guess the obvious joke mm -hmm. is that he wouldn't, um, he'd be like, hey, keep because it down. Because he's asexual. Like, he's, I'm, I'm trying to fight a big, burly guy. I care about big, burly guys more than women. You know, that would mm -hmm. be... Hashtag the, gay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Nonetheless, Odin is the kind of guy who helps people in need, uh, and, uh, but he blew this to save her. Oopsie doopsie, that's too bad. Yeah, Rest now he can't peace, be part Lord of Whitebeard's Odin. crew. He cares about... Oh, man. When... What the hell was that noise? <laughs> There's like a demon outside. Oh, shit. Well, uh, Riding a was, that was an umibozu just trying to spook you, get you away from your from your duties recording this podcast. But don't let that happen. Uh, kill it. Don't yeah. oh. time travel to the future to escape it. Stay and face it is my recommendation. 
I, I like the idea that the, the, they're all saying, oh no, uh, Odin failed. You say, you were way mm -hmm. too harsh, Pops. If you had just shortened it by one hour, it's already like three days and like, yeah. oh, 23 yeah. hours. Two days and 23 hours, I'll give you that. That would have like, been a very unsatisfying number. <laughs> it's like, that's not too harsh. But 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 three days. That's a little. Too, that's a little much. One extra hour. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah. They're just lamenting how close he came before blowing it because they don't know about Toki or any of that business. Uh, but, but so there you go. The the following day, here's Odin, full recovery. Very very Luffy esque. Very you know Shonen protag esque. Full recovery, looking great. Uh, Toki took care of him over the night. He healed up, looking good. That's the great thing. Even though he failed the wipe your challenge, it doesn't fucking matter because he's already off Wano, which was the main thing he wanted them for anyway. So as far as he's concerned, that's a victory. And uh, it makes me so glad to see him appreciating what he's got. Good, good, good man. Yeah, I mean, really, he only wanted to get out of uh, of Wano and to see the mm -hmm. world, and he's doing that. So, yep. you know. Yep. And he got to see a Very lot good. of icebergs and fish on the way. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, With his he, face. He, you know, optimistic. <laughs> It's great. It's very endearing. It's very endearing. And he's grateful to her for taking care of him while he was unconscious. He's like not mad, like, oh, you cost me my opportunity. You know, any of that bullshit. So that's very nice. But then she says, uh, oh, sir, did you say you're from Wano? I Now, she certainly looks like she's from Wano based on her outfit. But she says, I've always wanted to go there. Uh, and he laments like, ew, you're not even dressed exotically. Ew, gross, uh, Nipponese women. No, thank you, sir. And she says, I've always dreamed of going to Wano. Can you guide me there? And he is uh, disgusted. He is not pleased. I would pleased. never go back there. That's not These adventure. damn moids. Ew. Ew, always wanting to go to Wano and shit. So, so quickly on this point, Gib, do you think, considering Toki's history, I mean, she's got a very Japanese-sounding name, and she says, I've always wanted to go to Wano. I, I assume this is, like, a line she uses. She's, like, originally from Wano, would be my guess, and she left for, like, to escape or something, and this is, like, a line she uses to people so that she doesn't have to explain that she's a time traveler. She's a, yeah, and, I, um, I think that would yeah. that would make more sense. I was thinking why. Yeah. Because, yeah, she does... It's look, possible she, she's she never has, been to Wano. She has, yeah. like, a... Uh, what, you, what would you call it? Like a primordial Kozuki mm -hmm. uh, clan uh, mm -hmm. symbol on her clothing. Indeed, so indeed. I thought, yeah, she she must will, have uh, been I mean, from okay. Wano, and for some reason got lost mm -hmm. trying to escape. Maybe found a devil fruit mm -hmm. somewhere, and now then could like time travel, mm -hmm. and she's just sort of I trying to survive. It's, it seems, you know, considering how insular um, Wano is, I know I said this before about Devil Fruits, but, like, it would seem unlikely that many Devil Fruits are on Wano. Then again, like, they're probably, when a Devil Fruit respawns, it respawns close to where it was. So, like, it's definitely possible that some fruits, like the Toki Toki no Mi, or maybe, like, the fucking Orochi's, you know, Dragon Devil Fruit or whatever, his Orochi Fruit, those just, like, kind of continually respawn in Wano, so, like, they never really travel outside. I, I, I don't know. We whatever. still don't exactly know how Devil Fruits spawn. Um, That's true. We know they reappear in fruit, but we don't quite understand the rules yeah. of, is it the closest one? Uh, probably, but who, who can say? Who can say? I, I uh, do, but in any I case, mean, okay. later there's, mm -hmm. a, there's an interesting part about how mm -hmm. far in the past she's come from. We can talk about that then. Um, indeed, indeed. But for now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we've got an octopus man with a big squishy octopus on his head. This is another guy, Karma, who we see fighting with Whitebeard at the big war that happens later. So oh, do we? Another... I, f I didn't mm -hmm, realize. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just thought this Indeed. was a cool jobber. He looks pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, he is. He definitely is, but also an ally of, of Whitebeard's, which is nice. It's cool to see all these guys introduced here. All right. So Whitebeard ha appeared. He bonks the guy on the head. He's like, mm -hmm. you're not going to attack Odin, um, <laughs> and you're going to be on my crew, Odin, because... Uh, you care about women, and that's what I like. Just like Whitebeard. I mean, Whitebeard's the gayest man alive, but uh, he, nonetheless, he clearly appreciates. He's a romantic at heart. Yes. You failed the, the challenge, but you, you won the moral victory, which is all the more important, as Ben Saint can attest to. Hell yeah. Uh, and uh, so we're going to let you join our crew. And he, specifically, he says, we're going to reward you with the adventure of a lifetime. I think he's like overstating the case a little. That's a little too saccharine. We're going to reward uh, you for like doing a nice thing one time. The adventure no, of a well, lifetime. Like relax, I think it's bro. Just, I don't think it's like too overly saccharine. It's just sort of like no? um, Whitebeard likes Odin. He liked him immediately. Right. But it's like, he, you know, I can't really have you on my crew. But yeah, like he gave yeah. him an, a, a way to get the crewness. 
by by yeah, holding yeah. a chain for three days, and he did it. <laughs> and he not only did it, but he was also cool and moral. And it's like, you know uh, th- what? That's you're, true. You're my kind of guy. Get on board, eh, brother? Brother. And uh, <laughs> you're not wrong. And then now, noticeably, he still calls him brother, like not son or anything, which I don't know about you, but as they go adventuring over the next couple pages, it feels like Odin doesn't feel like a regular crew member. He feels like like a Vivi-esque, like a like an ally or like a partner as opposed to like a real crew member. Uh, maybe because we know he leaves the crew before too long that, uh, you know, affects it. But it, it still feels that way. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, in any case, Odin here says the legendary words, For real, Whitey Chan? Which uh, you can find emotes of For real and Whitey Chan in the Pod D Discord to mock all the disgusting <laughs> whites when they aren't members of the crew. And you can, whenever a Whitey says anything in the Pod D cast, a Pod D Discord, just say For real, Whitey Chan to viciously mock them and deride <laughs> them, as we love to do. So that's what you're in for. Is, is there uh, a setting where we can uh, prevent. The, the, the whiteys from uh, mm-hmm. using emotes is that already a thing I forget oh you can you can definitely do that absolutely right. we, we should, don't we have it set that it. way right now I think we do <laughs> maybe we'd, I, we we you have it so they can't at everyone because <laughs> they deserve to be punished for their lowly rank in life join the crew you cowards uh, this this notion of whitey pride has to be destroyed it's of cancer on the society uh, <laughs> in any case. There you go. Okay, so here we go. Odin joins the crew. Everyone's hanging out, having a great time. They're really excited to have Odin. Ne- uh, uh, then Neko, Neko Mamushi, Mamushi and Inugarashi. They were, they were stowaways. They so this is Fucking how they got Garfield out there. Garfield looking ass. Garfield and Odie motherfuckers. <laughs> they just, uh, I love all the drama and they just stowed away. It was just far simpler how they yeah. got on the crew. It's like Odin's like, look, we all know they get on the crew. Don't worry about it. They just were there. It's fine. Uh, okay, fair enough, Oda. Uh, so Iso's having a bit like, like a like a snark right now. Like mm-hmm, Whitebeard mm-hmm. and Iso don't have the best of terms, which is interesting. Why? How? Um, because we know later that Iso has becomes one of his commanders, and she, or, indeed, excuse indeed. me, he uh, doesn't mm-hmm. <laughs> join the the Roger Pirates, as far as I understand. Yep, yep. seems to be. But the maybe other, but maybe maybe they do. I don't know. I, maybe they join and then, like, just, like, after they disband, like, rejoins the Whitebeard Pirates. I mean, that's, you know, it, anything could happen. We don't know. I suppose we'll see. Yeah, but they're cramming in that, like, characterization in, in a little bit. And it's, 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 it's yeah. good. You know, it's, yeah, it's not like supposed it. to like take the, the, like, the, the spotlight, but um, mm-hmm. good, useful mm-hmm. explanation as to how, you know, other things happened. But without like, taking away too much. And, like, t- without taking too much time, I guess is what I'm saying. You're right, and Izo's Izo's definitely been a little bit of a tsundere towards Whitey Chan, and uh, oh, oh no, 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 I don't like you at all, sir. No, no, no. But unless, <laughs> unless, <laughs> uh, that's I see a lot of that going on, a lot of sexual tension on the gay beard pirates. Um, Speaking of and gay then, beard, uh, so uh, yes, <laughs> uh, White Beard says to Toki, "So who are you?" She says, mm-hmm. "Ah, my name is Toki. I want to go to Wano," and then he's disgusted. Ew. Gross. Well. Ew, a girl, a moid. This is why we don't let moids in the crew, guys. This is uh, this is yeah. this is not working out. <laughs> they the just talk about Wano. It's Shut just, up. It's, just, it's a really funny like juxtapos- <laughs> juxtaposition of of her like happily smiling face, like ha ha ha, and then white beard like ugh, right next to it. And this uh, this like meme that's been going on of like Odin cringe face and now white beard cringe. I mean Odin first. When, like, the crew was, like, following it, or his, his retainer started following him, he was, like, cringing at that. Now he cringes at Toki wanting to go back. Whitebeard does the same thing. There's a big cringe meme going on with, uh, with this flashback, and I'm, I'm loving every second of it. Um, so, but, so, but they just let Toki stay. I mean, Toki didn't need to do anything. And they, they don't even care that, like, Inugarashi and Neko Mamushi or whatever just fucking stay. In fact, wait, what was the explanation for why they didn't care why they snuck on board? Okay, um, oh, right, because they were friends with them already from uh, from Wano, I guess. So it's not like they didn't know these guys at all. Um, so I guess it's fine. In fact, and, it isn't even discussed Odin, why they allow them to stay. They just are, I guess. I think it's just, yes, yeah, it's, it's unimportant, and you can They're just Odin's say boys, that Odin's whatever. boys, yeah. So, like, whatever. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. So then we get a um, montage of their mm-hmm. some of their exploits where Odin goes way over the top in the, mm-hmm. the pirating. He destroys a ship before they'd managed to loot it. 
Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He finds this, uh, you know, this brand Odin, new- Odin, stop killing our enemies. We're supposed to sell them into slavery, you fool. That was a big mistake. Yeah, Whoopsie he see, daisy. He sees a strange looking building. He rushes ahead, very Luffy-esque, very uh, not thinking, very cool. And you know, I was looking at that building. At first I thought it was like Norland's land. I don't I don't think it is, uh, based on the shape of these. But then it has that Yari uh, in the middle. And I think the Yari kingdom is like a thing that we've heard before. Let me see. Yari, One Piece. I don't know if I'm wrong about this, but I think that the... God damn it. Okay, Yari means spear. All right, I don't fucking know what it is. I, I That may be familiar to me, uh, or maybe not. I don't fucking know. You, you, you guys tell me. I mean, it would be um, a good place for a little nod to something that's been mentioned, but also it's fine indeed, because it indeed. looks nice and it doesn't matter. If it's it new. sure does. It sure does. I guess those uh, towers look like spears, so maybe that's... I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. They go into a place he hasn't experienced heat or warmth to such degrees. He freezes He's on death. fire and he is solid fire. block of ice. <laughs> it's it's how strange how happen? he is, is like, he's on fire, but nobody else is. He, I mean, he just is such a run ahead of the pack, go getter he, kind he, of guy. Yeah, he's such. He's so, um, you know, devoted to everything he does. Even when it's cold, he is the coldest. Even when it's hot, <laughs> he is the hottest. <laughs> it's true. It's true. When there are animals and plants, he is the touchiest of all of them. It's, he's it's grabbing very that exciting. koala right on the rear. He is. He is. <laughs> Uh, and it's notable, it says, like, you know, uh, things I've never seen. Heat, warmth, plants, animals, uh, the people, looking at a big old giant. That's pretty cool. And then he also says, the power, with Whitebeard. So clearly Whitebeard is, like, way stronger than Odin. It seems to be oh, what's being implied here. So, f- fair I enough, mean, fair he's, enough. he's big. He's a big guy. He's very and large. he's got an You're earthquake, devil fruit. Odin doesn't have nothing. He's You're just right. got, he's got two and... swords. Pathetic. Pathetic. Uh, and and the then there's a nice big shot. Uh, indeed, as they're traveling around, we can see Odin has put on pants and a different shirt. How interesting. Uh, and everyone's just having a big party. How, how nice. And now this I, I like. Odin, as he always suspected, he's opening his eyes to more of the world. And he realizes how we all should, that we're just a tiny little speck in the world, in the grand scheme of things. And uh, it's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Odin's instincts were right on the money. There's so much world out there to explore. How nice. How nice. Then we learn, this is the bit, uh, Toki Mm -hmm. is 26 years old, but she was born about 800 years ago. Indeed, indeed. So, um, notable dates. I forget when the Void Mm -hmm. Century is supposed to have happened, but is she... The Void Century ended slightly more than, well, from the present day, but this is actually like 36 years in the past, so, uh, or like 35 or whatever it was. Uh, it ended 800 years ago is when that ended. So, like, a couple people on the pod score did the exact math with the age and the exact dates we have. She was born in the Void Century, at the tail end-ish of the Void Ooh. Century, so, which is uh, very notable. Very, yes. very notable. So we things, have confirmation. Yeah. So things she has potentially experienced, or her parents have definitely experienced, that she mm-hmm. might know, she might have told to Odin who may have told it to his people as well. Um, Indeed. Or her daughter or son. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the, these these super secrets from the Void Century might just be in in the brains of characters that are currently alive, which is very This cool. is... I mean, this is a person, more so than anything... The Poneglyphs have been our one ticket so far into the Void Century and the history of all that shit. But now we just have a person. I mean, she's not alive now, but she's the mother of many characters relevant and alive in the story right now. I mean, Hiori was young. Momonosuke was like a really big, really tiny baby. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't that tiny. But Hiori was... Oh, Hiori was even younger, wasn't she? Yeah. Uh, M- Momonosuke right. was the same age when everything crazy happened as he is currently. Like he's I a boy. suspect. So he probably hmm. would have been able to hear stories from his mom. Yeah, I was wondering. It's either going to be Momonosuke, probably, or um, uh, or Hiori, who like tell us the stories passed down from uh, Toki or whatever. Um, and they're also and also we like. There's definitely going to be poneglyph things happening here. And and you know the Kozuki clan is the clan that made the poneglyphs. So, so just just touch on one other fact: the Kozuki clan is the family that made the Poneglyphs. Like, it's true, uh, Toki's name is not uh, Kozuki, but, like, maybe names change, maybe things pass down, and it's notable that, like, um, the Kozuki clan means, like, 
Uh, it's like Moon something, and her uh, uh, her clan, the Amatsuki. Tsuki means Moon, so it it has the, it's like Heaven Moon or something. So like the Moon Kanji is is in both of them, it seems, or like the the name Moon. So like it definitely seems like there's a connection between their two clans, or at least very likely. And considering in the old days. It was the Kozukis who made the Poneglyphs. She, like, appears to have a connection to them, very likely. And we know she marries, you know, uh, Odin and all that stuff happens. It just, like, it, it just could not be more clear that we're going to get Void Century yeah. information um, from, from this I, Poe. I am thinking, because, mm-hmm. because of that panel of Odin writing in his log... In Indeed. his vlog, in his, in we'll his, probably just um, write it all down, right? His his written vlog, uh, right mm-hmm. there. <laughs> if only um, there was a term for that. Um, that that book, with all this information of his journey, might yeah. still exist, and it might that be book, readable. That book has been a very big like part. Like it's been used in this flashback as like a motif for us to like just connect with what Odin's experiencing here. But to find that book when he starts to get a little more information from Toki. That would definitely be a really good way to, like, first of all, because I, I think that Odin, uh, or rather, um, Momonosuke and Hiori are both a little young for me to expect them to have, like, remembered many of the story. They, they theoretically could, but I actually think it's a better idea if this book that's already become, like, part of the narrative here, it would work as a really nice connection, at, like, almost like... Odin's still alive in the modern era to have like his words like come yeah. to life and like Luffy it, to like read them and to connect with them. I think it could be that mm-hmm. maybe the book was burned in the fire mm-hmm. that destroyed the castle. Could be. Um, maybe peace maybe Momonosuke exists. has it or or Hiori right maybe now. Maybe Momonosuke Who has it or knows where it is or, mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be a very cool thing for it to to crop up. Indeed. Uh, Robin, Indeed. if she gets a, a, her, her hands, her many hands on that book, she'll mm. cream her pants. <laughs> she definitely will. Uh, it'll, it'll be like Niagara Falls, without, without a doubt. Uh, and I sure hope that happens. Um, so, I, I mean, okay, there you go. There's our theories. Very likely to happen. We, we shall see. We shall see. And here we go at the end of the chapter. Oh, One Piece on break for a week, but that's okay because we were, we were a little late anyway. Uh, suddenly, hard smash cut to who are the, what? Who are these handsome lads? Could it be a clown and a red-haired clown saying that uh, what we on our crew here we're going hog wild? Yet the newspapers are only talking about the fucking white beard guys. What the frick? Even though our crew beat the shit out of the rock, so they're pussies and we're better than them. But they've got a new recruit, it seems. A crazy samurai from Wano. And who's this but a very handsome-looking Gold D. Roger saying yeah. a samurai escaped from Wano. I want to meet him. Oh, my God, he's looking sexier than ever. No doubt about it. I can I can definitely see in his eyes, because the, the very, very earliest drawings mm-hmm. of Gold Roger were mostly mm-hmm. his eyes were obscured and you couldn't tell. But I can definitely see Ace's eyes in his face right there. I I agree. I, this this is the most he's looked like Ace so far in my uh, in my opinion. Uh, by the way, so Roger wears a lot of tricorn hats, which look really really cool, and I enjoy them very much. I'm wondering if because Buggy, ever since his first appearance, has been very partial to tricorn hats. Shanks wears the straw hat that was given to him by Roger. I wonder if Buggy, sure, it's a popular pirate hat, but I like to think, I wonder if Buggy wears a tricorn hat because he's like, I'm going to be like Captain Roger. I'm going to wear the same kind of hats he liked to wear, yeah, and I'll be a know, really cool pirate guy. Ha- does Buggy boast about the fact that he was on Gold Roger's crew that much? Because uh, it seems like he, it's the sort of thing that he would say all the time. Well... Like, we, when we first met Buggy in, in Orangetown or whatever, like, he, he only talks about how he was on the same crew as Shanks, and that's why he hates Luffy so much. He doesn't say at that point that it was the Roger crew. Uh, obviously, because, like, in the narrative, it was still kind of being built up as a mystery or something. But uh, I think it first comes up. Shit, when does it first come up? I, I guess during um, fucking... The execution? No, it, it can't be during Shabo de Archipelago. Was that the first time we learned that Shanks and Buggy were part of Gold Roger's crew when we meet Rayleigh? Uh, I, th- I think it is, but I'm not sure. I mean, it was a long time ago, but... I mean, for us now, yeah, but I mean, that was a long time from the very first part when we met Buggy. I think that, like, there's there's a progress... Buggy's arc is very interesting, um, and it's an interesting parallel to Luffy's, because, like, when we first meet Buggy, he seems like a like like pretty weak and pretty unimpressive. But then, like, at the end of that arc... He's like, I'm going to follow Luffy. And there's a, there's a thing that they say about, like, 
at the very beginning of One Piece, there's a there's a narrative about like you've got to get to like I mean we see this a lot with Don Krieg that like a Mihawk shows up and Mihawk represents like the terror of the Grand Line. Like the Grand Line is so scary and so spooky. And when when the Straw Hats go to the Grand Line, we cut to like Roger for a bit, and Roger's like, "I'm going back to the Grand Line," which is like supposed to be notable because like Don Krieg had been like totally decimated by the Grand Line, but Buggy seemingly made it back okay, which is like it kind of hypes him up as like a whoa, this guy's actually pretty badass, uh, you know, retroactively. Um, so like like the, the the narrative progression of like the the threats that we're supposed to be kind of in fear of. Buggy had, like, kind of tackled them in the past, which, like, so, like, we don't know at first that Buggy has these cool things going on with him, but we learn as the story goes on that, like, oh, wow, Buggy had done this, Buggy had done that, Buggy had fucking met Shanks, Buggy had bought to the Grand Line, Buggy had been on Gold Rogers' crew, oh, my God. I, I think that we do learn about that when we meet Rayleigh. Buggy's nose is correctly. one piece, what? Nah, it's, there's something in there. He, he hides something <laughs> secret in there. So, what, what was the point we were making about that? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. We, anyway, Buggy's talking out. a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it, there he is. It's Buggy. I think you were talking about he the looks tricorn great. hat or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Inspired by Roger. Uh, it's a popular hat. Other characters wear tricorn hats. But I like to think that Buggy wears it, just as a little reminder. We saw him cry when Gold Roger died. He loved his captain. And uh, I still want to know how the fuck Buggy got on this crew. Shanks, well, I can believe, I, was like Luffy-esque. Cause he I gave definitely him feel that. like... Um, yeah. The two of them were probably rescued. A package deal? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. They were probably like rescued orphans from something, and then Gold Roger mm. brought them onto his crew to protect them because no el- nobody else would, you know. They were just like Possibly. going to die for sure out in, the, out in the sea. Buggy's just dead weight, though. He didn't even pull an Usopp and like become a badass. He stayed a pussy. I mean, we don't, we don't know died. how cool Shanks was back then. I mean, sh- surely cooler than Buggy. He's got to be. He's a Yonko. He's got to be. Oh, no. Uh, I guess well, he yeah. could have been a he- bitch. <laughs> no, no, no. He wasn't a bitch. But, like, you know, the, the personalities would Comparatively have been similar. Speaking. Like, like, Gold Roger could see, like, potential in, in Shanks. Uh, and but he Buggy, couldn't see he potential in Buggy, and... right? <laughs> I mean, maybe he did. I don't know. I think it was just sort of like, you know, prove yourself and you can join my crew. But, it, you know, we'll maybe... If we ever get a Shanks or and or Buggy flashback, we'll yeah. learn it then. But I, I'd like to think that it it wasn't like entirely a charity case. Like they they were I, brought that's on the as as like uh, survivors of some sort of thing, and then I don't mm-hmm. they al- were allowed to stay on the crew for longer. Like he br- maybe brought them to some island for safety. Like you can stay here forever. Uh, yeah, now, you're, you're you're orphans, so whatever. I, I'm a pirate. I got to do pirate things, and you, it's right, dangerous. Right. And then both of them were like, "No, no." It would be like Shank said, "No, I want to go and be a pirate too. It's so cool. You're so cool. I want to be like you." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Buggy was like, "Oh, I'm gonna be left all alone." It's like, "Oh, this is dangerous," but I don't want to be <laughs> looking like a bitch in front of Shanks. So he runs up and says, "I'm gonna be cool as well." And then they're Love. both in on the on the crew from then on. Yeah, I, I would be surprised by that. I uh, I just think it would be it would be nice. It doesn't. I don't expect Buggy to like act like a hero or anything like that because he's not. But like, I would like when we eventually learn, as I as I hope we do, how that Shanks and Buggy join the crew. But I mean, I'm talking about Buggy specifically. I hope it's a little bit more than just like you said, like a charity. Because I hope he does something to like oh, earn I'm his sh- position. Because sure if do, not, I sh- I'm sure they do something. But the the the, uh, the yeah, I'm getting, like, even the, something the small personality. Like the reason Buggy would go on a dangerous pirate crew is not because... Just for the money. He, we know he was just in it for the money, <laughs> basically. Yeah, the money and the riches, and also because he doesn't want to look like a bitch in front of Shanks, who he might have as true. a childhood friend or something. They yes, might be bro- that, They might true. be best buds on whatever island they were from. Maybe. I mean, they could have met on the crew, too, or anything like that. We don't know exactly how they got here, but uh, they certainly are paired together by Oda these days. They're always on, like, cover pages. Whenever you put two friends together, it's Buggy and Shanks. Uh, oh, I mean, so they have. Red I love how one has blue hair. hair and one has red yeah. hair. What a, what a perfect pair! It's great. It's great. Like Superman and Batman over here, basically. <laughs> I'll let you decide which is which. Um, all right. Well, that's it. Gold Roger looking great. Buggy and Shanks. Uh, Odin backstory. We're we're quickly ra- so quickly we're just ramping up. Gold Roger's now boom in the story. Let's get him fucking in contact with Odin. Next chapter, I would love. Let's let's see how that goes down. Uh, Oda. And uh, let's move this flashback right along, because I think we're on chapter, I want to say like four or, f- 
No, this is chapter five of the flashback, I believe. So that's that's not bad, but uh, you know we, we we've got a lot to cover. So let's uh, let's get through this as quickly as possible. I, I I've been very happy with Oda's pace so far through yeah, all these events. It's, it's it feels good. fast but appropriate. Yes, the, the 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 little things that don't actually matter are being skipped over, which is which mm-hmm. is good. Indeed, indeed. And it's not um, overly um, emotional, at least not yet. Which is a pro- I mean, we'll we'll save that for like I when mean, th- I don't things know. Things can be emotional dies, so. when they you know when they're appropriate, but like this is very mm-hmm. comedy focused, very like funny because Odin is a funny guy. Indeed, and it's good. I-, I think. As with most flashbacks, all the emotions will probably come back at the end of the flashback. Like, we don't really need a ton of detail on, like, what he did with Whitebeard or Roger. What we really care about is this is the Wano arc, after all. We care about, like, him probably, like, getting together with Toki, learning about the Void Century to whatever degree, and, uh, like, seeing the final resolution, like, what happens with Kaido and Orochi back in, in Wano and how the family gets destroyed and, and those kind of things, so. Oh, yeah, it'll probably we end shall see. on that, uh, on, on, on mm-hmm. his death. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I bet it'll end with a journey, a journal entry of, like, uh, I'm sending this to the future with my son. Please, you know, protect oh, yeah, yeah. them. He's, he's typing, like, uh, I'm being killed a lot. Oh, uh, ow, uh, ow, uh, really uh, hot, uh, the uh, burns. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, that would be epic. <laughs> and then the little skull and crossbones at the end. Oh, that's morbid. <laughs> he was a pirate. Okay, there you go. So so there would be no chapter, but we're a week late, so there will be a chapter next week from when we're recording this. So how exciting for all of us. Let's see more of our pirate boys back in action uh, as soon as possible. All right, that's it. See you next week, folks. Have a beautiful week and a wonderful life. Uh, don't forget to go to oh, the, my God, the I almost forgot. Cast Patreon. Patreon.com slash the podcast pirates. Yes. yes. Give us money. Join the crew. Don't be a worthless white. We will say for real, Whitey Chan, if you are just a lowly white in the beautiful pod D Discord. But you can join so that we can peer pressure you into giving us money and joining the crew. Like with Odin here, it's basically as much of a ritual. Giving $1 a month is basically as painful and challenging as, uh, you know, hang onto a chain for three days straight. Basically the same amount of difficulty uh, to this millennials. Um, and uh, join, uh, oh, you can follow the Twitter at uh, Podcast Ahoy. Link down below. Send us things, whatever you fucking want to do. I don't give a shit. I don't need you. Uh, but especially give us money on the Patreon. I do need you for that. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, all right, that's it. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks again for all the good times. Bye. Bye.